following program is part of the Sci-Fi Channel's Extra Sensory Summer. Watch the Sci-Fi Channel all summer long for more Extra Sensory Summer special events. I'm Leonard Nimoy. You're about to take a voyage behind the scenes to see how the Sci-Fi Channel got its first original dramatic series off the ground. Mission Genesis, the next logical step for a whole new generation of space adventure. Mission Genesis takes place in the year 2157, when man had already conquered space travel, mastered genetic engineering, and harnessed computer technology. But one fatal mistake doomed the human race. A man-made virus ravaged and eliminated all human life. The virus was called the Pandora virus. This plague has completely destroyed humanity. And it's mind-boggling to think that everyone you know, everyone you could know, everyone you knew, everyone you will know is dead. Everyone, we've just received confirmation. Earth is orbital satellite detecting no life signs. Before the last humans perished, they managed to secretly launch into space a ship, codenamed Deepwater Black. It carried a precious cargo of six human clones. Those clones, each placed in a cryo chamber, together represented every human trait. Once they awaken, a millennium later, they would have ultimate knowledge and guide their ship back home to repopulate Earth. But the crew couldn't wait a millennium. We were removed from cryogenic sleep prematurely because we were under attack. This project is mankind's last hope, basically. Uh, it's a last ditch effort to somehow regain our status in the universe. Which is the mission. Get back to Earth and repopulate um, humanity. One wrong move and, and any future possibility of Earth is eradicated. These six young space pioneers are the only humans left anywhere in the universe. That's a lot of pressure. The challenge for the mission Genesis produces is to represent all of humanity, all the traits of human existence, with only six characters. Stand by on weapons, I need you to clear a path. Reb is the leader and captain. We yeah, didn't have time to talk. So we just blast away and return? No! We establish a game plan. We have to exhaust all our options. He ends up being the decision maker. First, with Zach, we'll try and get the computer up and running. Second... Hold it. Nobody put you in charge. Yuna is the headstrong pilot. I represent the adventurers. Oh, stop it! The weapons are handled by the disciplined Bren. He's trying to take over! He's the representation of discipline and of order. If this was a military ship, you'd be facing a court martial. Lise is the sensitive healer. She supplies the care. I don't want your blood! Not my blood, my antibodies. She's very comforting. Let me give you the antidote. She's not closed off. She's very open and empathetic and warm. It's all right. Zach is the impassioned computer whiz. I got it! <laughs> Zach represents uh, the futurist in each and every one of us. I'm the genius of cybernetics. Great. The nurturing Gret oversees the ship's gene bank. Gret represents the feminine side of a person. So that's our mission, to make sure that the human race survives. A final non-human member of the crew is Jem. She is. The ship's computer is revealed to the young crew in a hologram image. Hello, I am a holographic projection of a biocybernetic artificial intelligence system. My full name is Genesis DX37, but I'm commonly called Jen. You have uh, five, hello, uh, six other characters who have definite positions. And that, in a way, is what the series is all about, the passion of these characters trying to stay on this mission, which is Genesis. What is certain is that through trust and experience, they'll all begin to learn teamwork, unity, and even love. These are teenagers in space, like, you know, hormones in space. She may have a little, a little extra feeling for a certain soldier boy. Where better else to start than on the spaceship? The love boat. Oh, bad boy, dream on. Falling in love has been good for many a man. 
or clone, as the case may be. Yes, they're clones, but don't forget they're still human. Each character is able to access memories, knowledge, and experiences from their donor through a sort of genetic flashback called a prex. Commander, congratulations. I just heard that the committee has chosen you as a genetic donor for the Deepwater Group. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. The only real evidence you have of being a clone is the prexing. Prexing stands for pre-existing memory. You have these flashes of, of you know, your, your past donor's life. What was being done to you was criminal. They denied you your destiny. What are you talking about? My family? They were inferior. Forget them. The cast understands their serious characters and their dire mission, but try turning loose six 20-something actors aboard the set of a futuristic spaceship. What you get is a post-apocalyptic party. Next, come with us for a personal tour of Deep Water Black, the Mission Genesis Mothership. You must all return to cryogenic sleep. They have their own lives. If you do not enter your capsules, I will replace you. She's shutting everything down. They want their freedom. You expect us to climb back into those pods and just go to sleep? But they could use a little help. That's a pull plug. Do you really want me to kill the only chance we have of getting any answers? A Sci-Fi Channel original series, Mission Genesis. Premieres Monday at 7.30 p.m. It's happened before. Put a cast of young, good-looking actors in a spaceship, add a groundbreaking premise, and wait for the magic to happen. But take it from me, it's not that easy. We have six characters and one holographic computer, but those actors were brought together, not knowing each other, having to work in a situation the same way the characters did. Please, no! I think we got a kind of energy in the writing and the producing and the directing from the live dynamic being very much like the fictional dynamic. You owe me, baby. <laughs> okay, ready? Let's have quiet, please. Director George Mendeluk is guiding the young cast like a camp counselor. Hi, George. Getting the most from each actor by taking a personal approach. So I said, you know, it's well, that, that's different. George was really good at corralling us all together and getting us to work towards a common goal. That's easy to fix, so let's just pick a time when you should start walking. You have young people with varying uh, backgrounds and levels of experience coming together with a real passion to make the show work together. We do have a lot of fun. There's bound to be fun between takes. Okay, energy guys, ah! But when the camera's ready to roll, everyone embraces the fact that they're making a carefully crafted program. 42 take three. Mark. Mark. Action! You mean we have to put up with her for another three days? It's the best I could do. Why? What's the problem? Hyperspace vector points are temperamental. We have an element of uh, truth uh, to what we're, uh, what we're trying to portray. That's it, is it? Lock me up like a prisoner, then get rid of me? We do come in contact with uh, others. Kira, we're not blaming you. We just... We want to keep you from having a toxic effect on us. I'm not even close to toxic. Yeah! Uh, 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 uh. Jump on you now. Uh. She gets thrown back. <laughs> Kira, got again. Ren, don't. Let me handle this. That scene with Kira is typical um, behavior for Lise. What am I feeling? Don't. It's love. That's what you're feeling. I'm trying to save you, Kira. Through love. It's love, baby. Okay. <laughs> through touching her and putting positive energy through her. Because that's what she knew the solution was. It's all right. They managed to sedate her and calm her and uh, basically send her off to safety. We're a sci-fi show, but we're not bug-eyed monsters. Ooh. Everything that you see, everything you hear, everything you experience in this show was thought about by at least 15 different people before it comes to you. She can't see me, then maybe I should yell something. Or... Yeah, you could. All right. Stop, I've got a gun. Freeze. <laughs> and uh, I think that is what sets us apart. Freeze! In the show, almost all of the action occurs aboard the ship. 
In real life, that set is a virtual maze of infrared monitors and futuristic control rooms. There are enough high-tech toys to keep this cast from the computer generation occupied for the next millennium. Yes, I think I hear you not. You're wanted on set. Oh, I have to go. We are on the set of Mission Genesis. This would be the engineering section where I, Rev, would sit. Okay, thrusters prime. Let's go for it. Gen set the vector. Engineering controls everything. This is where we came out of our cryogenic sleep, in which we slept for 500 years. The doors open hydraulically. I'm the one who types in the coordinates to make the ship go where we want it to go. This is a shower, because when you've been in cryogenic sleep for 500 years, you come out a little funky. You know, I throw it over to Yuna, who gets to throw the switch to actually enter hyperspace. Call hyperdrive over and... We are in hyperspace. This is the med bay. And if you're sick or not feeling well, you get on the med bed, the person brings you inside. Considerable intensification of neural activity. I'll have an analysis in a minute. This is where Bren sits and fights off the bad guys with all his big guns. Bren, find the starboard guns. Fire. This is the liquid crystal screen, and uh, it's a direct interface into Jen. Jen, you're back online. Yes. Rerouting my cognitive integrator solved the problem. This is a laser scalpel. And in one of the episodes, the laser scalpel goes out of control and hits the biohazard containment unit over there, releasing the plague. The producers of Mission Genesis say that one of their biggest challenges is making a show that's believable to hardcore science fiction fans. Next, the show's 20th century production designers envision and engineer guns, gear, and get-ups from the year 2156. Darth Vader had the lightsaber, my favorite Martian had the antennae, and on the Enterprise, we had our phasers, tricorder, and transporter. The producers of Mission Genesis also had to create a signature style. They needed to design a look for six clones, plus all the space hardware needed to keep the human race alive. This is the trademark gun. Freeze! This is the gun that's used in almost every episode. You're right. When you fire. I'm sorry, I have to do this rep. Classic from stun to kill kind of thing. These are my condensation gathering shoes because the plastic, when your feet heat up, it collects condensation so we won't, you know, die of dehydration on the ship. This is my portable medical scanner. Strange. Encephalographic contour parallels that of spontaneous replicatory syndrome. I just scan it over the part of the body that I need a reading for. It gives me readings about the heart, lungs, I can scan it over someone's arm and it'll tell me exactly what's wrong. You really want to know? Looking the part is also essential. Look, I need you on the command deck now. You can't do science fiction in a t-shirt and jeans. You know, it's just not gonna work. We got like hip cool clothes, then we got the hair, then we got the makeup. Maylene, uh, who was the uh, supervisor for a wardrobe, was, you know, cutting edge. This is uh, the women's um, shuttle gear. Um, they all have coordinating outfits, tight outfits for the women. For the men, they got the cool baggy pants. The extremely cut look in 2157, sheer, is actually based on fabrics and styles made popular by extreme snowboarders in 1997. Almost. Well, I like the boots, because I like to board, I like to snowboard. Um, I liked, I, I wasn't too crazy about the spandex at first, but it definitely gave me motivation to go to the gym. Um, and, and now, hey, bring on the spandex, baby! This is a good example of the kind of thing that Gret wears. She's our genetic scientist, and of the three girls, she's the most sophisticated and sort of sexy. <gasps> At ease, soldier. You know, a lot of the stuff I would wear in my everyday life. Cute. Well, this is Bren. He's our military officer. His clothes are a little more structured, a little tighter. He's ready for combat. Lise is our, I call her our girly girl. That's part of who she is. Lise, do something. 
I don't like these vital signs. Who knows? You know what? Maybe in the future, we will go back to not wearing any clothes. Take it easy there. <clears throat> you know, that would be cool. Finally, the hair and makeup departments can provide the small details that can make a character into a cultural icon. I remember the first time that I saw you, I thought your eyebrows were crooked. These are Eunice's world-famous eyebrows. Well, my eyebrows were very strong. Then, should I do the mascara and put all these people? Sure. Right. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm secure with my masculinity. Gordon wears mascara. Gordon wears mascara. Let's go into hair. You don't want to go over the top with the hairstyles. This is Sandy. He's amazing. He gave me my ultra cool haircut. Uh, the hairstyles are are believable. That's a little bit more realistic. My hair was actually orange for the show. Uh, does that mean we're clones too? Because as we all know, clones have orange hair. The show has a very distinct look. And that's brought about by a number of young, very young, under 30 people. Let's go for it. For the wardrobe. It's made out of a holographic material. The art director. You have the complete effect. Whammo. And they're giving you a very young, hip look which is very obvious on the screen. Wardrobe, makeup, sets, props, they're all key ingredients. Still, sci-fi shows will always make their mark with special effects. And in Mission Genesis, those effects are state of the art. There are a lot of CGI effects throughout the show. Although the CGI effects are used to complement the characters, not the other way around. Has she resumed full function? You have to have special effects. And the special effects on this show are exemplary. I was blown away. Computer graphic effects are used not only to animate the ship, but also to decide upon a design. The deep water ship uh, is built for longevity. It has uh, a mag lift which takes you through all 10 chambers. It has 10 decks. It's built for the long haul. Deep water two is leaving orbit. I'm going after her. We've got this shuttle pod that's really, really cool that you, you get in, you strap it on. It's very fast and very maneuverable. It's sort of everything that the main ship can't be. A number of sketches and computer prototypes were tested in the creation of the mother ship, Deepwater Black. We went as far as to bring an engineer in to, to uh, tell us how a ship would move 500 years from now. How are we going to get through space? What did we wear and tear on the ship? What would the damage be? That ship is taking a huge beating. What would our communications be? This message is for your eyes only. How would they live? Cool in a crisis. That's us. And it evolved over a process of about six or nine months to the ship that it is now. The ship itself it would probably be the size of a cruise ship of today. You know, everyone has their, their space, you know. An incurable virus attacking the human race, cloning life forms, the launching of probes deep into the far reaches of the galaxy. These are not far-fetched science fiction concepts. The basic storylines of Mission Genesis are rooted in the reality of our own world. When we come back, science fiction merges with fact. At first look, the fresh-faced cast of Mission Genesis may make you think if space had a zip code, it would be 90210. And that is a sobering thought. But don't let these youthful faces fool you. The makers of Mission Genesis projected real issues into the future and came up with a plausible but fatalistic theory for mankind. It's the kind of show that raises questions that can't be answered in a half an hour. We're just copies of somebody else. Genetic twins. So we can be replaced. This is about not just individual survival. Look, we have to think of our own safety and the safety of the GDP. It's about that thing we have within us to, to make the race survive. I'm dying to know what our primary mission is. As far as I'm concerned, we've already accomplished our primary mission. What's that? Same as every living organism. We survived. And they do this through 
through technology, but they also do it through their own human resources of wanting to stick together as one. How are the others? Still weak, but resting fine. Please. Uh, about what I said. Like I have time to listen to everything you say. It's still essentially human problems. No matter what they're faced with, all they've got is their inadequacies and, and, and each other to deal with. Still, the message of this show is one of hope, that human ingenuity will always find a way to ensure its own survival. It's a message of community here for sure. Our characters right. are developing a community aboard this vessel, and they're returning to Earth to develop a community again. And a community has to be diverse. Each clone is a conglomerate of people. And so, I mean, I could have Irish, I could have, you know, Russian, I could have African, French, all put into one person in order to make a whole. Every show, every film, every series has to be about a value. It has to be about the value of life. It has to be about the value of um, love. And these children, Rev, they're going to grow up like real children. It has to be about something we can relate to. They're going to have real memories of their own. What I really feel that this show addresses is that uh, life is not really black or white. It's sort of gray. I'm sorry. I'm on a mission of my own. Forget that mission. I'm coming for my ship. In life, you don't always get yes or no answers. You get maybes, sort of. Call me back in a week, you know? Um, and our characters definitely deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. And we want to do it in a way that's cutting-edge television, whether it's through computer graphics, or the kind of stories we tell, the kind of camera angles we use, or the kind of energy. So we want exciting television that's cutting-edge television to attract a youthful audience. We are young, and, and we are the future. And the characters have to deal with that. I think that's very promising for the future, you know? I think it's sending a great message out there. So, yay us! <laughs> Science fiction has a proud tradition of touching us, both predicting and affecting the future. No doubt, Mission Genesis is both a cautionary tale and a hopeful fable one that can take us even deeper into the rich universe known as science fiction. For the Sci-Fi Channel, I'm Leonard Nimoy. Thanks for watching. Now that you've been behind the scenes, see the Sci-Fi Channel's first original series, In Action, when Mission Genesis premieres Monday, July 21st at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, stay tuned for Tales from the Dark Side. It's coming up next.